This is definitely lethal. <laughs> oh my gosh. Stop it, HGG. You are a bad man. Um, All of them? Of course, we sack our giant. They don't have a sack. They draw and get the damage anyways. And there's two more damage here. Uh. Hello, good game. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ghouls and goblins. I appreciate you supporting the channel. Make sure to smash that thumbs up button if you haven't already done so. I know it's early, but some of you guys are great. I love you so much. If you're looking for additional information within the video, you can find it within the link tree description below or give it a Google. Everything from the 500,000 gem giveaway, the D&D rare playset giveaway, which is pretty cool. Get in on these things, right? You can find more information within the link tree description below. Give it a Google. Within today's video, we'll be playing with Candles in the Dark. This is a Rakdos Red and Black Sacrifice slash Aristocrats deck. This means that we'll be playing small mana-based creatures within the curve, you know, one drops and two drops, uh, more than not tokens, and we'll be sacrificing them for additional effects. The uh, deaths of our creatures may trigger uh, an effect as well, which is really quite nice. Um, so that's kind of what you can look forward to in the deck. We'll be breaking it down uh, in depth, right? It's more than just an overview. We'll go through in depth the strategies and synergies incorporated within the build. We'll also break down the gameplay footage, discussing the play lines and interactions. This is going to give you um, a really good idea of how the deck will operate in the mythic meta, which is, you know, really what we're all here for, right? And then we'll wrap up with my final thoughts and deck review. The whole process giving you, um, you know, the viewer a good idea whether or not the deck is uh, right for your personal play style, because we all play and like and thrive with different, uh, uh, you know, archetypes within Magic the Gathering. And more importantly, if it's right for your wildcard collection, because there's some mythics in here, there's some rares that rotate. So, you know, it, it is what it is. So, but um, the deck's performing great. We have a 100% win rate climbing up from, you know, like 1500 to top 1200, which is really nice, beating some really cool decks along the way. So thank you so much for watching. Smash like on the video now if you haven't done so, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on all of the contests and giveaways. Let's get into it. All right, Candles in the Dark is a 60 card, best of one, 2.1 average mana value, 19 non-creature, 17 creature, 24 land deck within the Rakdos color base, black and red, 69 poggers and 36. Dude, those are some nice percentages, um, woof. Anyways, it's an aristocrat slash sacrifice deck, so we have to have the combo wombo claim the firstborn village rights in play, right? Claim the firstborn, gain control of target creature with mana value three or less until the end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until the end of turn. So we're using this to take our opponent's creatures, in which case we can use one of the many sacrifice effects incorporated within the deck. So we're not sacrificing our own creatures, we're sacrificing our opponent's creatures, right? Village Rites, the most notable instant speed for one as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. So you take their creature, you attack with it, then you sack it, you get to draw two cards, and they lost their creature. So that's a lot of fun, right? We also have Plum the Forbidden. Uh, this is amazing. At instant speed for two as an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice one or more creatures. When you do copy this spell for each creature sacrificed this way, you draw a card and lose one life. So it's like uh, a repeatable Village Rites, which is really, 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 really good it's so amazing uh of course we do have things like the woe strider in deck as well a three two when it enters play create a zero one goat token we can sacrifice a creature at instant speed to scry one so good so we can sacrifice our whole field with the woe strider without having to pay additional mana which is pretty cool we can replay it from the grave via the escape by exiling four other cards from our graveyard and it will re-enter play from the graveyard via the escape with two additional plus one plus one counters on it uh which is quite nice the predator can sacrifice a three three with flying for four whenever it becomes tapped exile one target card from a graveyard and put a plus one plus one counter on the predator sacrifice another creature it gains indestructible until the end of turn tap it and then of course we have rankle as well three three flying in haste whenever it deals combat damage to a player choose any number each player discards a card each player loses one life and draws a card each player sacrifices a creature right so that's our sacrifice effect there which is a lot of fun that's all we have in the main board for sacrifice effects we do have necrotic fumes in the sideboard for three mana at sorcery speed as the lesson as an additional cost to cast this spell, exile a creature you control, 
exile target creature or planeswalker right so we're not uh getting the sacrifice effect because we're exiling it so don't expect triggers from bastion however you can still combo it with claim the firstborn grab your opponent's creature attack with it then use necrotic fumes to exile their creature and another one of their creatures uh which is really 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 good um so you know we, we can bring something like environmental sciences into uh the sideboard here as well however you know as far as your strategy and synergy goes necrotic fumes you're comboing this in as a sacrifice effect branching out from there we're using bastion of remembrance to gain value from all of those sacrifices furthermore when it enters play, create a 1-1 one, one white token human soldier creature token. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life, right? So that's going to be the chip damage on every death. Uh, and it's going to give us life as well, which is pretty cool. So we've got some creatures to play. The eye twitch, 1-1 one, one with flying when it dies, learn, helping us get the fumes or potentially environmental sciences. The scorpion, when it dies, two damage to an opponent, we gain two life. That's just helping us out with the bastion. We have Forbidden Friendship for two mana at sorcery speed, creating a 1-1 one, one with haste and a 1-1 one, one without haste, which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, two tokens for two mana, that's great. And then of course, you know, a little bit of removal within the stomp, two damage. Uh, it cannot be prevented this turn as well. Whenever it becomes a target of a spell, deal two damage to that spell's controller as the giant uh, four power, three toughness, which is really nice. We also have a single copy of the Ox for two when it enters play discard your hand then draw three cards replaying it from the graveyard for two mana which is cool exiling eight other cards from our graveyard and then it gets with an additional plus one plus one counter on it which is quite nice we have a castle lock swing tap for four draw a card lose life equal to the number of cards in our hand plus the rest of our land so that's the deck list strategies and synergies stack bastion of remembrance stack creatures have them die with things like plum the forbidden right easy peasy Take your opponent's creatures and sacrifice them. Easy peasy. Get uh, you know, some of those mid-range creatures in play to attack, like Rankle, like the Predator, uh, with their flying or evasion, which is really, really good. So um, you can do a lot of damage with this deck. Uh, again, 100% win rate within Mythic today, climbing into the top 1,200 with ease. And um, you know, I'm really enjoying it. So let me know what you guys think of the deck in the comments below. We're going to get into the gameplay footage now and wrap up after that with our final thoughts. Make sure to like the video if you haven't done, set, done so yet and subscribe to the channel to partake in our contests and giveaways. All right, our opponent going first, Luris Rogues, gross. But I will take that crab. Not right now, but in a little bit. Turn three, we could do it. Turn four, we could have maybe a bit more luck with it. It's a hard matchup. Rogues, you know, aren't fun to play against. So... The question here, do they have counter magic? And do we take the Thought Thief over the Enforcer and the Crab? It's really hard. Really, 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 really hard to do. Um, would have to be in a gate. Or, um... Like a Wari's Disruption, I guess. Something like this. They attack with a crab. I absolutely love it. They're crazy, you guys. But it's like... They're just gonna play Luris and replay it for one. It's not good. It's just not enough. I don't think... It's good enough, Billy. Let's try to force some life gain out. Um, you know, we can block the Enforcer. Hit for two. Another. 
What a draw hand. Devil cancel air. Woof. It's late here for me in the evening. I just finished dinner. It's 7 p.m. Uh, typically this is just before my bedtime, but I slack today. I've been really, really burnt out. Mm. I guess we take the Enforcer. No attacks. Um, play the Strider. And we'll just sack the Enforcer. Maybe we should have taken the Thought Thief there. I hate the Enforcer though so friggin' much. This can stop the Thought Thief. So can Rankle. Should we keep looking for other stuff? Yes. I mean, the Indestructible is good against the Death Touch, too. Rankle's out next turn. Let's take the Enforcer here. Thought Thief remains in play. That's a bummer. We sack the Goat. Take the Thought Thief. They thought that was going to go the other way around. But now I don't have anything... Uh, <laughs> to use Rankle with, right? Framing our graveyard is an amazing idea. There's plenty in there, though. This will make us that billy goat, and then we can rankle, force the sacrifice. Don't shoot there. Just take the turn, put Luris in your hand. Don't worry about it. Well, we may as well take the scry. Land can go. It's the mill that sucks, down to 28. So much friggin' land. It's a big hit, right? That's a lot of damage. Okay. We should have played the red source, then we could have played our ox as well. Shoot. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. We may have just cost the game there by not playing that mountain with the ox that turn after the stroke. We sack Strider for the draw. And then hit for two. They're totally tapped. Down to 23. Two lands off the top. Thank you. Another Woe Strider. Our opponents, uh, you know, not really hit their lands. They haven't seemed to have 
taken advantage of into the story, which I thought was the companion card to the rogue deck. I thought they always had access to it, could always play it. Down to 19. We really need to make this next turn count. Up one mind, that's okay. Three mana available. We have uh, a fair amount of damage here as well. Ooh. Ooh. So first things first. <clears throat> wow, shoot. We actually should have village rights first and tried to draw claim the firstborn. Totes, my bad. That's three damage. The eye twitch is four. They might counter this. Okay. No draw, that means. But now we know they're not playing a, another Thought Thief on us. And we're killing their Thought Thief they have in play. Still hitting for one. Plus the additional three. Total of four, down to five. Will Strider out. We are emptying our grave as fast as they can fill it. Right? Oh my gosh, it's down to seven. We do draw here down to 14, I believe. And uh, that's lethal. Land can go. Goat can die. Well, that's a nice card. I don't really want to be drawing any more, though. Land can go. Good game. Bastion of Remembrance and Woe Strider. I think can get pretty dirty. Um, I quite like that. Beating Rogues is always nice. They kind of got stuck on their third land for a little bit, which was really to our benefit. Let's get into a new match. Our opponent plays first, and they have Yorion, which, oh man, is really bad for us. Binding of the Old Gods. Ouch. You know what I mean? Uh, this card dominates our Bastion of Remembrance. Kind of stops our entire deck. So... How can we avoid this? Maybe they don't have... I actually... I refuse to believe that they don't. Three Bastions. How many times do you think they bounce their binding? Three times? Well, no, only twice, right? The original play kills the first. If we can get um, some Woe Striders in play... Oh, non-creature... take the fumes. I mean, that kills Yorion if they're not going to take it out of our hand, right? First Bastion in play. They definitely take one of the other Bastions. And they get to see our kind of game plan, which sucks. So they have to have Binding of the Old Gods or you know, they're ramping to Ugin for a minus. They do take the fumes. They don't want to lose Yorion. We get to keep the Binding. Hooray! We can learn with the other eye twitch for another fumes. Let's just stack these bastions up as quick as we can. Looking for a second black land. Where are you at, Mr. Swampy Doo? 
in my personal uh, geography, we always uh, joke that we live in a swamp. We're swamp people, right? It's only uphill from all around. <laughs> Okay, just Yorion, that's great news. I do not even friggin' mind. Boom. All attack. Yorion blocks one. We're sinking in four damage in total, gaining three life. Don't mind that. Um, the minus here sucks quite a bit. Welcome to my domain, Planeswalker. Scorpion goes. We need the fumes. I'm gonna village rights this. Find a friggin' swamp on my own. Right, where are you, Mr. Swampy Doo? <laughs> Never mind. Forbidden friendship is cool though. We could hit for another four damage. I can't imagine claiming anything of theirs. Oh, a token. We can claim a token. I think I just want to plumb again for the draw, try and find that swamp on our own. Come on. What you gonna do, Willis? We have a 2-3 to worry about. Yorion. Um, can potentially go into defense, uh, offensive mode, I mean, sorry. Taking swipes at us for four. We're kind of having trouble with our land, looking for that second swamp still. Three Bastions is pretty groovy, though. They do have the Triome with the availability to blue. Oh, Exile. Ouch. Ouch, that really sucks. Okay. So we have a claim, at least. We can't kill Ashiok. Maybe they've got removal. But we could answer it if we get it. So we have an answer to the removal if they have it. Let's hit Ashiok for two. We actually exile their cards, which is cool. That's a test of talents. Mm. All right. Let's sack the token. It's a bit of damage. It's not, you know, enough. If we had the three creatures in play... That would have been much better, but they shadow verdict them. We get the second black source. We get the second black source. I twitches out. Okay. Rankle can take a swipe in on our opponent. Potentially hitting for four, five, six, seven, because we can self sack it. Oh, Hardcast Shark Typhoon. Do they have a second mana? Or uh, a Blood Chief's Thirst here? Nothing instant speed for one that I'm worried about. Yorion definitely shouldn't attack at this point. Back into a defensive posture. We're looking at our grave. It must be cling to dust. Just 
So what we can do is take this thing, right? I'm just wondering if we should play Rankle here or not. If we do, then they get their 2-3 back. We get one damage in. They block the 2-3. Okay, so I actually screwed that up. Oops. We should have just sacked the eye twitch without attacking with the 2-3. And then pulled the fumes. So doing 6 damage here. We had some draws. I think we're just going to be able to burn them out, right? Okay. So, if they overcommit, we have Rankle. We need to worry about their instant speed shark off. We can even just play a creature and village rights our own creature, right? We can claim their token village, their token for lethal. So I think we've got this. Oh, we can even just woe stride for lethal. So let's try to pull counter magic. There's a negate. I got a shark. Does Woe Strider hit? They need to counter here too. I think they've got it. I'm assuming they do. Okay. So they just grab some more life there. We can deal six damage. Woe Strider the Goat, Village Rights the Strider. They've got a lot of damage in the air though. I'm I don't want to count them out of this. This is a good match. They might get it. Okay, that really hurts us. Let's take the life gain. Rankle can go, we already have one. So it was a good play on them to gain that life. Push the goat over, um, or not the goat, the ox, because we can replay it. Oh no, that goes into exile, sorry, not our grave. Whoops! Maybe we should have pushed the scorpion. For some reason I was thinking it just went to the grave, but it actually goes into exile from your hand. Which is a rare thing. Oh! That's pretty good.
Get rid of the fumes. Getting hit for 10, 12 damage. They have to hold some form of counter magic. Good game, they don't have it. Woo! That was a grind. That was so close. Um, but again, Bastion of Remembrance doing work. They didn't have Binding of the Old Gods, and they didn't determine that Bastion was a threat immediately. They took something else, and uh, I think that was our saving grace, which is really, really good. All right, going first. Let's see if we can make it three in a row. That would be cool. We really need this third land. We should, you know, I'll put it in the deck when we do the deck tech and um, stuff. There should be environmental sciences in case you don't pull the land, right? It looks like we'll be fine, though. We have stomp available. We have village rights. I would love to combo village rights with claim the firstborn. I think we just let them have it, don't we? Right? It's not the end of the world. I'd rather take it from them and get the draw than just stomp it. Ashton could also hedge that damage that we've just taken. Let's hit for one, why not? I don't feel like blocking trample damage, right? Robert is so friggin' good. No blocks. I'd rather stack Bastions and then start having things die. Take the champion. Just as we're getting uh, more life, right, from the whole thing. Because it has the big booty attached to it. Hitting for four. Sacking the champion. Gaining an additional life. Right? Tying things up at 17 apiece. And then we pass our turn, try to get them to put the spear on the robber, stomp them during that interaction. Cool, cool, cool. They don't really want to stomp our creatures, right? Oh no. Oh no. Remember how we wanted to save these creatures and stack the bastions? Well, that's what we're doing, and it's going to pay off for sure. Hitting for two here. Bone Crusher on the blocker. Two damage, two life. They're down to 13. We're at 19. Will they play that Bone Crusher Giant for us? <laughs> That's going to be the question. <clears throat> play a land. Put the spear on it, too. Just 
giant in session. Forbidden friendship on the go. And we hit for two here, dealing um, a total of four damage. Two through the Bastions, two through the Strikers. We gain two life as well, up to 21 now. Um, and I think we've got this wrapped up. Here's an additional two damage. They are going to gain some life here, though. Not great, and we don't get the kill. So they go up to nine. Frustrating. Oh. Can't gain life. No blocks. Up to ten. Um... Yep. This is definitely lethal. <laughs> oh my gosh. Stop it, HGG. You are a bad man. Um, all of them. Of course, we sack our giant. They don't have a sack. They draw and get the damage anyways, and there's two more damage here. Uh, it's too much. Rankle is such a house in this deck late game. I love it. Undefeated, 3-0, and oh, tearing it up through the uh, numbers, and I've not actually had this kind of success in a while. Um, so yeah, cool. Let's break down the deck, wrap up, and um, give our final thoughts. Wolf. All right. So candles in the dark. Rakdos aristocrats. Um, much better than the last time I took a, a look at it. Uh, I was so focused on the predator the last time I built this deck. Uh, this time focusing more on plumb the forbidden and stacking of bastions, which is is pretty groovy. And I think potentially, you know, there's a world where we're running tutors to you know hyper stack our bastions, right? Um, instead of relying on the draw and i'm fine with that because they gain the life that would uh, be taken by your grim tutor for example so um i think bastion of remembrance is really really nice and then there's also that white tutor um uh that white tutor that just grabs uh something search it's white um Da, 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 ideal tutor an enchantment card yeah so we wouldn't even potentially have to pay life for that if we wanted to incorporate white with a mardu version and we could just tutor out our bastions in another life right a different deck just a cool idea what kind of ideas do you guys have let me know in the comments below thank you all so much for watching i appreciate each and every one of you who've made it to the end of the video give me a wolf in the comments below more importantly than everything have yourselves a magical day. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon in the next.